What's going on YouTube? Champer Productions here coming back at you with another Transformers video review and in today's video I'll be taking a look at the Transformers Studio Series Leader Class Grindor. Now for the packaging on this guy it is standard with the Transformers Studio Series lineup. We can see a picture of Grindor there on the front, Grindor and Ravage. It says it's Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, Transformers Studio Series. We got a picture of Grindor. He's a 70 Third figure in the lineup, leader class. Come around to this side, picture of Grindor. Here on the back, we can see big screen, blah, blah, blah. It's a force battle, 46 steps. We got a picture of Grindor in robot mode, helicopter. We got a picture of Ravage and the bio that reads, Fighting Optimus Prime proves to be a headache for Grindor as the Autobot leader tears his head in two. So yeah, there you got that. Um, everything else is standard. Removing the insert and showing you all the backdrop real quick. We can see here that it is the Force Battle, which we see Grindor from. So, very nice insert. Trying to get all this out of the way. And moving right along, taking a look at accessories. The only real accessory Grindor really comes with is Ravage here. And we can see it is just a pretty static minifigure. You can see the gray plastic and the silver paint. And all the fairly nice detailing. Head sculpt is fine. Silver there, red eye. Articulation, legs are on ball joints. So, I mean, you got articulation there. And then the tail can hinge in and it is attached to the guns on the back. So, I mean, there you go. I'm going to put them right up next to Soundwave. So, there you have that. Then he does come with his instruction manual, which has been done exact same as any other Studio Series instruction pamphlet has been done in. And then he does come with warning sheet. So there you have that. And here we have Grindor in his helicopter mode. And the helicopter mode for this guy looks absolutely fantastic. I mean, the helicopter mode looks spot on to not only the helicopter we see in the film but to the real life helicopter this is a uh, Skakorsky MH53 um, Pavlo and I've seen these helicopters in real life and this is extremely accurate to how they look in real life it's really really a good looking helicopter mode we can see all the details here See right up here for the cockpit and whatnot. You got 53, you got some yellow paint, Decepticon symbol right there. Red for this little pipe here on the front. Some black for the windows. Some black on the turbine. And for the turbine outtake, we got some uh, brown, bronze-ish color. Uh, we got 53 there on the side. We got Marines. Very, very nice. Got some more details that have been added on. Come around to the back here. We've got Danger, Keep Away. Got little light right there on the back. And this back blade here, rotor blade, spins as free as can be. And it is awesome. So, there you have that. Uh, the top blades here, um, they don't really spin too freely, uh, which is kind of good for the robot mode. Just due to the design, you don't want them really flopping around the back. But you can see here on the underside, you got some landing gear, which do not fold away. They always stand out. But overall, very, very nice helicopter mode. And while the helicopter mode does look really, really good, I will admit it's not without its falls. You can see throughout the helicopter mode, there are a few panel lines. But the helicopter that it represents, this is a good and awesome representation of the helicopter mode now you can take ravage here and you can store him on the underside of grindorn to do that you're literally just going to straighten him out and there is a peg right in here and there is a peg hole on ravage's stomach and you're just going to take that it's a lot easier when you're not having to work inside of a review space i'm going to do this a little bit off camera i'm sorry guys but it's the only way and yeah, Ravage can just hang out on the underside there. So 
it's storage. I'm not going to say anything. It's storage. Ravage was never even seen with Grindor in the film, but they decided to give Grindor Ravage anyway. But, you know, I figured I'd show you that because it's it's a thing you can do. And moving into size comparisons, here we have the Studio Series 07 Voyager Class Optimus Prime. Uh, this is my custom painted figure. Uh, this is not stock. I've custom painted a lot of this figure, like the gold and the blue flames and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, so there you have size comparison there. We can see Grindor in helicopter mode is huge. Like, this is a big figure. I've measured the length of the blades here, and it's over a foot in length. So this is a big helicopter, and you can see just by scale there how big this figure is. But taking him out of frame, bring in, this is the Transformers Studio Series Revenge of the Fallen Voyager Class Starscream F-22 Raptor. You can see how these two scale side by side and how they look, and I think they look really good together. Um, I think they definitely look good side by side, so there you have that. Again, this is a huge helicopter mode, but I, I think it looks fantastic. Again, not without its flaws, few panel lines, and transformation takes some getting used to at least for my copy i uh, had some issues getting him to stay together in helicopter mode uh this assembly up here had some problems staying tab together but that's because that was me not understanding how to do the transformation correctly and stuff would get in the way of each other and i'll explain that once we get into the transformation now for the transformation if you haven't already you're going to want to come to the underside here and remove our little ravage friend and we can just set him off to the side then next what we're going to want to do is take this assembly here and take this off. Yes, this is a parts forming piece. Um, I, It really doesn't bother me. But set that off to the side. Now we can work on the main transformation for Grindor. So for Grindor's transformation, what you're going to want to do is go ahead and start by taking the propeller or yeah, the um, helicopter blades here and folding them like so. Then we're going to take this section here, these turbines, and fold them forward like so then take the panels here these entire this entire blah, blah, this entire assembly here untab it from the helicopter like so and take these panels fold them in like that then what you're going to want to do from there is untab this assembly here and then take his hand right here and unfold it like so and make sure it's oriented properly and in the right direction. We're going to go ahead and rotate his arm around. See, i got to rotate it the right, way, right, the right way around. I cannot speak. Then we're going to take these two pieces here and tab them into each other. And we can go ahead and take all this. And there are two tabs right here and right here and two tab holes here and here. And these will lock into place. And there we have an arm for Grindor. So after you've got that complete, you're going to want to come around to this side and do the exact same thing. And you can see what I was talking about here. The helicopter mode doesn't hold up perfectly. But anyway, uh, I'm going to take this assembly here, untab it, take this, fold this down, take this, untab it, get the hand folded out, and straighten this out. I believe that does go like that. Fold that into place, make sure it stays locked in, take the arms, fold them around like so, and then lock the shoulders in place. Now one issue I do have is that there is a tab right there and a tab hole right there that the shoulders are supposed to lock into they don't lock in like period and that was a problem this figure is a reuse of the blackout mold and uh, that was a problem that was a current on the blackout figure unfortunately they did not fix that at least on my copy moving along with the transformation we're going to work on the legs now we're going to take this assembly here and untab it like so take the legs and we're going to rotate them forward like this and we're going to take the feet, fold them forward like that. Take the landing gear, fold them up. Take this panel, pull it down, and then rotate it around. And before you... Actually, it's better to go ahead and take this panel and fold this around like so. Take this panel, swing it around, and then collapse it into the foot. And that will form his foot like that. So, do that on both sides. Take this, fold it up. Take this panel here. Eh. 
flip that around, take this, rotate it around like so, and straighten out the legs a little. There we have Grindor's legs pretty much complete. And then you can configure this, uh, the legs however you want. They're kind of on this double hinge here to get that chicken leg look. We'll worry about getting this figure straightened out once we get them complete. From this point, we're going to want to take these panels here, fold them to the side, and then, whoopsie daisy, I probably need to raise my camera up at this point. Sorry, guys. Coming up to the top here, take this assembly here, and we're going to split it in half like so, and pull that up. Then we're gonna come around to the underside here. We're gonna press this section in, which is gonna actually pop his head up, like so, and then we take that windshield, fold it down, and then take this front section of the cockpit, fold it up, like so, and then that'll allow us to bring his waist, and we're gonna have to straighten out his legs while we bring his waist up, and then tab it into place, make sure that stays down and tab that into place. And there we have Grindor's lower half complete, like so. Then after that, we can take this little piece here and fold it down. And now we pretty much are just straightening up the back here. We're gonna take this piece here, which is kind of like the turbine, and we're gonna pull, well, we don't wanna pull that up. We're gonna pull all this up like so and bring it over his head like that. Then we're gonna take this piece back here fold it up and then make sure the blades are out of the way and double hinge this assembly up and tab it into place then make sure the arms are out of the way take make sure these panels here are out of the way as well these will fold up on top and then there's a tab hole right i'm going to show you right in there that will peg into this peg right here and then there's a peg hole right here that will tap into this peg right here. And you kind of got to get all this to sandwich together, which can be kind of tricky. But once you get it there, it's all nice and tabbed and secured into place. Then you take these panels here and fold them down. And then from this point, the figure comes on tab as soon as I get ready to say, at this point, you just straighten the figure out. There we go. At this point, you basically just trying to straighten the figure out, get them oriented however you like, chicken leg, straight legged, you know, however you want to orient the figure. This is kind of hard to do behind or in front of a camera, but straighten out his hands a little bit. His hands can be posed. Make sure the blades are nicely organized and whatnot like that and with a little bit of uh, patience being a youtuber and finagling here we have Grindor make sure his feet stay tidied up here we have a Grindor in his awesome looking robot mode no nah, no 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 just kidding we forgot about this piece this piece right here uh, it just has a little peg, and there's peg holes on the sides of his arm. You can see here, peg hole, and that will just tab into place. The instructions tell you to tab it in like this, which I will leave it like that for a little bit. I'm not going to keep it like that the entire review. But here we have Grindor in his robot mode officially. So, we're done. We've done it. We've transformed Grindor from his very awesome helicopter mode to his very wicked looking robot mode. And the robot mode for this guy is fantastic. I love the look of this robot mode. It looks really, 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 really cool. Um, not to say that doesn't have its issues. I'll get into that a little bit more during the articulation. I definitely have some QC issues when it comes to the lower legs, but I mean, everything else is really, really good looking and a pretty solid figure, I gotta say. So giving you the quick 360 spin around of the figure, we can see that he's done very, very nicely, and it's very accurate, I've got to say, to what we saw back in Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. Um, really, really good looking figure. All the mechanical detail looks fantastic as well. You can see how this guy looks. So, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the details. Now, bringing him in for a closer view here, we can see his legs have been done really nicely. We can see all the mechanical detail and whatnot that goes in to his legs and whatnot. Very, very nice. You can see all the mechanical, move his arms out of the way, all the mechanical sculpting and whatnot that goes into his leg here. Looks really, really nice, really cool looking. His leg positioned back. 
can see you got kind of that rust effect because uh, he was shown in the film uh, with some rust on him. Since Grindor is Blackout um, revived, uh, Blackout did sit at the bottom of, I think it was the Mariana Trench for a very long time before being being brought back to life with Megatron. So he definitely had time to have some rust build up on him. And that's what they were trying to replicate on this figure. You can even see here, if we move this out of the way, you got some uh, rust there on his kind of skirt armor there but we can see this figure has been done really nicely you can see the mechanical detail there on his arm as well see and the arms have been sculpted and detailed very nicely too i mean all the mechanical detail that they managed to fit into this figure is like fantastic you can see and his head sculpt as well is extremely faithful to what we see in the movie you can see the red eyes you can see some more rust up there very, very awesome looking design. I've got to say, I really like the way this figure looks. It is a cool looking character. So there you have all the details for robot mode. Now real quick, because the instructions tell you about it and because he comes with them, Ravage. Ravage can store on Grindor when in robot mode. Simply spin the big guy around, take Ravage here, and you straight up just Peg him on his back. I'm not even. I'm not even going to comment on that. That looks grind or I say grind or blackout came with Scorponok. Uh, the Studio Series um, blackout figure came with Scorponok, and Scor that makes sense because Scorponok was Blackout's companion. But why Ravage? I'm just trying to figure that out. But hey, we got a Ravage figure. Hooray for Ravage! Now for articulation, it's he's not too bad. Um, definitely not the best in terms of articulation but he definitely does have a good bit of movement starting here at the head the head is on a ball joint so he can look down he can look up and he can look left to right no 360 unfortunately just due to the um helicopter cockpit and everything which i love i love the fact that the helicopter um cockpit becomes his chest and everything i think that's really cool uh arms he can move forward he can move back you do have outward movement um here as well you have a bicep swivel and then a elbow bend. And then due to this bit of transformation, you can use that as an elbow or a, not elbow. Yeah, a butterfly joint. So you can use that for articulation if you really want to. Hands, this is an improvement over the blackout figure. The hands on the blackout figure were kind of just molded in place. Um, kind of like that, but with this you get full 360 rotation. Uh, the thumb is on a hinge joint and the fingers are on a molded together joint. So you definitely got plenty of movement there to pull off some really cool poses. The legs are a little bit hindered when it comes to the waist right here. Um, this skirt panel here does move out to a certain degree, which does allow you to get ratcheted kicks forward. And there is a good bit, as you can see here, of give in the ratchet on my figure. Don't understand that. But uh, you do get ratchet backwards, and then you do get an incredible amount of, like, above average amount ratchet outwards. So, you know, you got that. Then you've got a thigh swivel here, and then the legs down here, you got a knee joint right here, which allows for some pretty good poses. And then you've got a joint at the shin, which allows you to get them into that chicken leg stance. So there is that and then the ankles you have quite a bit of articulation as well you've got forward and backwards and some ankle tilt so all that being said grindor here has quite a bit of posability but that brings me to one of my main issues within robot mode one those ratchets have way too much play in it as you just saw and of course as i bring the subject up Grindor can have a little bit of a difficulty standing and I'm thankful he's standing up right now But due to how loose his ankle joints going back and forth are and they're not loose loose But the figure is extremely top-heavy so it can cause for some instability When in robot mode, but thank God for this review. He is not being a nightmare for me to handle So there is that but as you can see very very poseable for this character. Now for robot mode size comparisons, here is the ROTF Studio Series Voyager class Starscream. So we can see they're roughly around the same height. You can see Grindor definitely does shrink down in comparison to helicopter and robot mode, but I think these two look good side by side. And here is the ROTF Studio Series 07 Voyager class Optimus Prime. This is my custom painted version. 
so you can see how Optimus Prime scales next to Grindor. Uh, Grindor, I think, was definitely a little bit bigger in the film, but, uh, you know, they don't look bad side by side. So, there you have that. One fun thing I do like about Grindor's little weapon here on the side is that, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you don't have to plug it in this way. You can plug it in like this and kind of have him with his little weapon that we saw him wield in the movie. And that's going to be how I display him on my shelf. But overall, very awesome figure. So overall, what are my official thoughts and opinions about the Transformers Studio Series of Leader Class Grindor figure? Overall, he is a fantastic figure. Not without his flaws, though. Learning the transformation is a little bit tricky. You have to have the legs perfectly straight on these ratchet joints moved forward um, in order for it to all tap together. And you have to make sure the turbine sits properly within helicopter mode. But once you understand that... Um, it's, it's a pretty smooth transformation for the most part, and both modes are very rewarding. The helicopter mode is an extremely faithful version of the helicopter that he turns in, in, in the film and in real life, and the robot mode looks exactly like how he did in the film. So, overall, very good figure. I recommend him. Definitely a good figure, and especially if you missed out on Blackout like I did, the hand upgrades and stuff like that just make this figure worthwhile picking up. Overall, I recommend Grindor here. But guys, be sure to leave a like, comment what you think of Grindor down in the comment section below, and be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss a video from my channel. That's all for me, Champer Productions, signing off.